Okay, break's over. Uh, after this video cast, we now have two real presentations with real question and answer sessions, two full papers. Uh, and the first one from Belgium will be presented uh, by Charlotte Larmezeau. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm from the KU Leuven University. Uh, I'm really honored that I can present uh, my research paper today at this LAC conference. Um, the title of my uh, research paper is uh, The Influence of Students' Cognitive and Motivational Characteristics on Students' Use of a Four-Component Instructional Design uh, Based Online Learning Environment and the Learning Game. Uh, this research is in association with IMEC, ITEC um, Research Center, which is, um, yeah, our research is um, more, yeah, uh, scientists um, and engineers. And then I'm also associated with the Center for Instructional Psychology and Technology, uh, with researchers that have more uh, an educational background, which is also my background. Um, my, I want to situate my research paper in, my, in the broader context. So actually the title of my PhD project is uh, investi Investigating the Effectiveness of Online Learning Environments uh, for Complex Learning. Uh, everybody knows that complex learning is uh, very important um, because we are th those are skills that we need um, as students uh, in our future life. Um, if I would apply this to my uh, context, um, at first I worked at the university and I saw people uh, doing PhDs uh, and I thought that was quite easy. They looked like quite chilled and everything they did uh, always looked significant and so on. But uh, now as I'm doing the research of the PhD myself, I see um, it's more like this. So a lot of pitfalls, a lot of obstacles. Um, so it's really important that we actually learn to deal with these unpredictable uh, situations that we have the right attitudes, uh, the right knowledge and the right skills to deal with those uh, situations. Um, then the theoretical framework of my uh, research is um, if you want to uh, create an effective online learning environment, uh, you have to take into account three major components. Uh, for instance, the content. Uh, in my case, uh, more complex content, also students' characteristics, and the instructional design. Uh, for instance, to give an example, um, students can be, for instance, more motivated uh, to work in an online learning environment if uh, the content is authentic, if they recognize that they can use it in their future life, if it's more problem-based, um, as a more problem-based approach, um, so that can influence each other. On the other hand, if you see that um, your students have low prior knowledge, you probably will counteract that by um, making the instructional design more appropriate, for instance, by adding worked examples, uh, by offering more support, scaffolding, and so on. Um, those, those comp so the relationship between those components actually define the quantity of use, but also the quality of use, which is also very important. Uh, is it effective use? Is it optimal use? Uh, and that uh, can give, yeah, can predict the student's learning gain. So my current study, uh, I selected um, some aspects in this current study. Um, for instance, the content uh, is learning French as a foreign language. Uh, learning French or learning language is very important in our country because we have a really, really small country, but we have already three official languages, uh, which, uh, so I'm a Dutch speaker and we have to learn French, for instance. Um, then um, students' characteristics. I took into account students' cognitive characteristics and also motivational characteristics based on uh, prior research findings. And then the instructional design. Uh, we systematically designed the online learning environment based on the four component instructional design model. Uh, more information will be given uh, in the next slides. And then we also defined the quantity of use of learning tasks and additional support, which kind of can give us an indication of students' self directed learning are they uh, consulting additional support or not, uh, and how this affects students' learning gain. Yeah. 
Um, complexity, task complexity, how do you define that? Um, there are authors who are defining that on different ways. Um, if, you are, if we are basing ourselves on the cognitive load theory, we can say that complexity can be defined by the interactivity of different elements uh, that the working memory has, has to deal with. Um, also, Christian and Van Meerenboer define complexity um, based on the integration of different knowledge, uh, attitudes, and um, skills. Um, also, it has to be, we have to be able to transfer it to daily life and work. Uh, I also um, added an example, for instance, uh, if you want to show uh, the way in a foreign language, uh, you have to know vocabulary, uh, you have to know how to name the, the names of the roads, etc., uh, the names of the buildings, uh, also maybe attitudes, when do you use formal, informal language, uh, grammar, in this case, uh, the imperative, the articles, uh, also listening and speaking skills. Speaking skills are here between brackets because uh, I didn't really um, use that in my uh, online learning environment. So, um, the four component structural design model, I think some people already know it. It's um, actually um, designed by Van Meerenboer, which is a Dutch uh, researcher, and uh, he um, actually gave some guidelines of how you have to design effective learning environments for uh, complex learning skills. So um, I translated it in my uh, online learning environment. Um, so this is actually his model, and this, uh, the components are my translation of it. So um, the backbone of um, the model is that you have authentic learning tasks. So these are the circles, uh, and the circles are for, uh, uh, I was almost falling off the stage. Uh, the circles are red. Um, and it diminishes every time. That means that they get less and less support. Uh, for instance, here we have an example uh, of a learning task. Here we got a lot of support because students only have to fill in the gaps. So sometimes they have to fill in vocabulary, sometimes some grammar. Uh, so they get a lot of support. Uh, in the end, it's so uh, they should be able to have a proper conversation on their own without any support. Um, if a student is uh, doing a learning task, and he realizes that um, he's lacking some knowledge, and maybe he's, he's forgot how to form the imperative, and then he can consult the just-in-time information. This, in this case, uh, a link where you can click on, and then you have a pop-up just-in-time information, uh, which is, in this case, a summary of the grammar. If a student says, mm, it's not enough for me, uh, I need to know more, uh, I don't understand this because it's just a summary. Uh, you can consult the supportive information, which is basically, in this case, a theory, uh, which gives more information about that specific topic. If students say, um, I like to practice it before I start with the learning task, you can all, it, uh, the student can decide to do a part task practice. This is like a more drill and practice exercise, but just, for, in this case, for the imperative, so just for one element. Um, uh, maybe I should explain this. So the supportive information is always available um, and is adapted to the, the specific learning task. We also selected students' characteristics. Uh, we selected them um, based on can they influence use, can they influence a uh, learning gain, uh, for instance, um, we made some theoretical claim. Uh, there were some theoretical, theoretical claims uh, about prior knowledge. So for instance, based on uh, cognitive load theory, um, they claim that students with higher prior knowledge are more able to self-direct their learning. So probably uh, there will there will be differences in use. Uh, Self-efficacy. Self-efficacy uh, students participate more readily, work harder, persist longer. So maybe, probably, they will uh, spend more time uh, on doing the learning tasks more qualitatively. Uh, also, task value. Students with high task value pursue enjoyment of learning and understanding of new things. So maybe this also indicates that those students will spend more time uh, in the online learning environments. Despite these theoretical claims, 
uh, a lot of studies that actually investigated um, differences in use based on prior knowledge, task value and self-efficacy uh, found different findings. Almost the same, uh, it's also the same if they looked at the influence of students' characteristics on learning gain. So what we can conclude based on uh, former research finding is that we have actually inconclusive results. So we cannot say this or this will uh, affect uh, differences in use. But uh, if you look at the papers more in detail, uh, you can actually see that um, different students' characteristics were uh, incorporated in the research model, which can definitely influence the uh, significance of the certain characteristics. Also, uh, differences in use is always measured in different ways. People use time spent, other people use course pages consulted, other people use just course enrollment, so um, it's defined in different ways. Also, um, when people, well, a lot of researchers study online learning environment in a very controlled setting, um, like with a supervisor who walks around while they're doing their learning tasks. Of course, if you do it that way, uh, you should take into account that online learning requires a lot of self-regulation skills, and if you supervise them, you are going to actually control uh, that use because like important things like task management or, and so on are not relevant anymore. Uh, so that can also be uh, an issue. Also, uh, a lot of papers give little information about the course design. Uh, they just say that they studied a online learning environment but they say a little about how, about, about the content, how it was built, um, the kind of um, task, a lot of drill and practice exercises are, are most of the time, um, yeah, a lot of, yeah, they are a lot of drill and practice exercises, I mean, sorry. Um, and also it's not clear how the differences in use influence performance. So that's why I formulate this, formulated two research questions, uh, where I first um, looked at the influence of cognitive characteristics and motivational characteristics on the use of the four different components. And then I also looked at how the use of the four components actually used, uh, influenced students' learning gain, controlled for uh, specific student characteristics. The methodology and the measurement instruments I used. Uh, first of all, I used uh, a pretest. So that's a French uh, content knowledge test that was made by my colleagues of uh, KU Leuven University. Um, and then I also uh, gave an exploration session. So the exploration session was like I was telling the students um, that um, they could use the online learning environment, like they wanted to use it. Um, that the learning tasks were basically the most important things to use, but that they could uh, console support based on their needs. So they were really free in how they used it. Uh, then they got a questionnaire after they like browse into the learning environment uh, about their task value uh, and self-efficacy. So these are examples of questions I asked. So I'm very interested in the course and the content of the course, uh, and then I'm expected to do well in this course. And there are some questions that I asked uh, about their French knowledge. Uh, then they could use the online learning environment. So uh, in total, 161 university students participated. Um, what was always important, it was an experimental setting. So French as a foreign language was not part of their training program. They could use it for two weeks. The estimate time of completing the course was an hour and a half. Uh, and user data was scored based on the learning measurement system uh, because everything was made in Moodle. And then we had a post-test again. Um, we measured like what they use and um, well, we measured the, f the use of the four components and therefore I made this scheme because uh, you had embedded um, components and non-embedded components. So. Um, if you look at the four, so it was very extensive, there were like four task classes and each task class contained four learning tasks. The, um, 
each learning task contained just-in-time information. Uh, there was also part task practice for different elements, and there was also contingency support. So they could use everything that is in a color, uh, they could use on their own um, when they feel like they, ha they needed it. So it was their own uh, responsibility. Uh, the learning tasks, they had a specific order, so that's a may maybe important. Um, if you people know, for instance, edicts, uh, the learning tasks were like sequence that you just push next and you got like a more difficult learning task and so on. So um, these were less uh, the responsibility of the students. Results, and actually I can use this cartoon because I drew it myself. Uh, descriptives, uh, students' characteristics. Um, if you look at the pre-test and post-test, you see there was like uh, a learning gain, um, self-efficacy, and task value. Um, yeah, actually, I actually added these graphs to show that there were a lot of differences in the, the students because, yeah, like I said, it was a very experimental setting. Uh, some students had a high prior knowledge, some had a lower prior knowledge, some were very motivated to learn French, some were totally not motivated to learn French and said, I don't need this in my uh, training program, so why am I doing this? Uh, and then, of course, self-efficacy also, a lot of difference. Studying youth, um, we saw that an average people spend uh, more than an hour on it, so we estimate or an hour and a half, so an hour is quite okay, I guess. Um, we also looked at the distribution of uh, the different components. Maybe I'm going to start with this one. Uh, so as you can see in the circle, uh, we looked at the course activity, and uh, of course, a lot of people use the learning tasks, but that is, of course, logical, because like I said, they had this sequence that they had to all follow. Um, but if you look at the different components, the different support, like the past uh, practice, uh, supportive and procedural information, you see that uh, they're more or less the same. So people choose different things. Uh, here you can see an overview of the activity and the amount of students actually using it. Uh, so you can see that different students use different things. Um, If you look at the results, uh, the results were based on structural equation modeling. Uh, I used the R uh, Levon package uh, to analyze my data. Um, and what we see is actually that if we look to prior students' prior knowledge, we see that it influences uh, part task practice in a negative way. So students who had a higher prior knowledge uh, did last less part task practice. If you look at uh, task value, um, we can see that students with higher task value, consult uh, more supportive information. So maybe you remember supportive information was extensive theory. So you see that task value can have an influence on that. Uh, also, uh, they spend more time on learning tasks. So probably they were more motivated to do the learning task in a qualitative way. Self-efficacy doesn't really have an influence on the use of the four components. If you look at the, use of the, four com the influence of the use of the four components on students' learning gain, controlled for students' characteristics, we can see that most of the time, uh, learning tasks combined with procedural information has a significant influence on students' learning gain. Uh, but of course, we have to take into account that uh, mainly prior knowledge had an influence on that learning gain. So results and discussion. Um, I already told you so that students' prior knowledge and task value uh, induce differences in use. Um, so we, uh, in this study, we actually see that prior knowledge has an influence on differences in use, which is in contrast with a lot of studies I've found. Um, but like I said, there was sometimes there were different measures. Uh, they just looked at relevant pages consulted or just time, uh, time spent. Um, students' task value had an influence on the use of support information, uh, which is similar of a study of Martins et al., who uh, actually saw that students with higher task value uh, had more explorati explorative behavior. We had no influence of self-efficacy, probably um, 
it's also a bit the same, like prior, similar to prior uh, findings. And then, of course, the combined use of learning tasks and just-in-time information. Just-in-time information can be compared with scaffolding, so maybe there can be a link with that. Still, there are some limitations, so we know what components were consulted, but we don't know why uh, students consulted these specific components. Uh, and there was no influence of self-efficacy. That can have a lot of reasons. Maybe persistence is not really reflected in course activity and more in page and uh, in, in time spent. Maybe um, the content was not compl complex enough, so they didn't really ha encounter difficulties. Uh, so these can be possible reasons. So what I've learned from this study that it's really hard to link students' internal conditions uh, to specific use. We can only base ourselves on uh, interpretations, um, like I'm referring to the black box. So we have like a, s a certain input in the structural design. Um, you know, I'm, I'm running out of time. Um, and then we have like the back black box, which is the, um, the human, and then the output. So we don't know what happens in the black box, box so we still need a lot of things to do. And therefore, uh, future research uh, we are going to use more data, multi-channel data, focus just on uh, smaller components of learning environments to see what actually happens at the time it occurs. For instance, if we measure cognitive load and we see that there is a cognitive overload, uh, what happens? Do they then self-direct the learning or not? So um, this could be a way to go. Um, the implications I already kind of mentioned that. So thank you for your inf uh, for your attention. Um, if you have like um, questions, you can ask them. Also, if you have like interesting related work or something, I would like you to send it to me uh, because it's all it's just my uh, first year. Well, it's my second year now, uh, so I still have a lot of work to do. So um, I'm really open to a lot of suge suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure there are questions. I might have been wrong. So I'm, I'm starting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did you test any variations of the four components? I mean, you, you, you explained the model, and you, and you said that you implemented these four components uh, as they were shown in the screenshot. But surely there might have been other ways of giving that kind of, uh, of implementing these types of components. Did, did you test uh, any variations there? Uh, no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't an intervention study. So it was really an expert, explorative uh, study. Uh, so there were no differentiations uh, in the, it was just one learning environment. Uh, this was just a translation of the four component structural design model. Um, you have to understand that the four CID model gives some guidelines, but you really have to like apply them mm -hmm. in your own way based on what you have, um, what tools you have, and so on. So, mm -hmm. any more questions? Um. Just very basic question. Um, you applied now for CID. And it's pretty much a for CID study uh, because you followed all the steps. And so, could you think about applying a different model and doing the similar analysis, or is for CID the only model you could apply? Um, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, the for CID is just like, like I said, a guideline. Um, I don't know different models right now, but I think. Um, if you just like use um, a good learning task and, and apply scaffolding or, or other guidelines that are proven to be efficient, uh, I think that's that's quite enough to do. It's just um, we just wanted to systematically design the online learning environment because we did some different studies and we actually want to compare what happens if we do some adaptions and. Um, In your definition of a complex learning, um, are you only interested in the in, in cognitive factors, or would, uh, how would you how would you 
um, define complex learning, also incorporating elements like uh, motivational things, or on, the, on your last slide, you even kind of hinted at uh, things that go into the affective dimension a little bit. Uh, what's your definition of, of a complex learning scenario, since you're focusing on that? Um, yeah, I think um, my research is basically based on the cognitive load theory, mm. the, like you said, like more cognitive aspects, um, the in interact interactivity of elements. Um, so if the interactivity is very high, we would say that is quite complex. Mm. Um, but we did not really give another in def definition, so we, we kind of use that information to... Mm. And well, one, one might come up with different uh, definitions if, if you incorporate like this motivational element also in your definition. Uh, it may be more complex for a student uh, if it's really, if there is a problem on the motivational side for him given a, a specific situ situation that you might think of that. Yeah, that's true. Um, there would be room for one, oh, there is not only the time but also the person there for a question. So just the thought, you found that self-efficacy um, wasn't statistically significant in your model. Have you been considering um, playing with the idea of um, resiliency? Um, it's a little bit different concept, but also taps into those uh, non-cognitive variables that might be potentially used and seeing whether um, you know that differs. Um, it is a different concept, so... Um, it's mostly about that perseverance, um, you know, and adversity. That's a very good remark because um, we do see that self-efficacy is highly correlated with prior knowledge, of course. Um, so maybe it would be interesting to use that. Okay, I don't see any more questions. So let's thank the speaker again.